Hi everybody, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021-22 Panini Elite Basketball. Six box, half case, pick your team number 14, all card ship. And 14 is the second half of the case we popped open uh, last night. So we marked all of those 14 right there. And here's the final printout. We've got Kings at Coyotes. A little hockey on the background. Coyotes just tied it up 2-2. And we'll have, we'll have NBA starting up tomorrow, I believe. So here on the 23rd, thanks everybody for making this happen. The next, uh, another half case break from a fresh case is in the store. And the, the next two breaks will be our last breaks of Elite, if, you're, uh, if you want to get on it. Big thanks to Bennett, who got the last five teams for that quintuple last spot mojo. So good luck to you, Bennett. Good luck to everybody. Thank you for getting in. All right, let's get started. Games do we have? I think after this, it's the last day of, of uh, I guess spring break for the NBAers. Their All Star break. And tomorrow's schedule. I think we have two TNT games to tomorrow. So what's the schedule for tomorrow? Earliest game is Cleveland at Detroit, and then the TNT game is Boston at Brooklyn, then Atlanta at Chicago. These are non-national games. So Atlanta, Chicago, Memphis at Minnesota. Phoenix will be in OKC. And then the late TNT game tomorrow will be Golden State at Portland. And then Denver at Sacramento is your other non-national late game. When do my Lakers play? Do I want to see them play? <laughs> I do. Feb Friday, they're playing on Friday. Clippers at Lakers. So same same place, but technically a home game for the Lakers. Uh, that's the late ESPN game on Friday. And the early ESPN game on Friday is Miami at Knicks. That should be a good game. So we're getting some basketball back underway. We do have some NBA news here. According to ESPN, guards Darius Garland, Karis Levert out due to injuries as Cleveland Cavs return from break. Got Portland Trailblazers center Yusuf Nurkic out at least four weeks with left foot plantar fasciitis. Has anyone ever had plantar fasciitis? I'm pretty sure... The plantar fasciitis is, oh, at, at your heel. But I think it's that big tendon underneath your foot, right? Maybe it's closer to the heel. Well, apparently, I've, ne I don't, I've never had an injury like that. Um, maybe it's only injuries athletes get. I'm certainly not an athlete. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe, I hear it's one of the more painful injuries in, in sports. We got Kai Jones to $9.99 for Charlotte, $4.29 at $9.99 for Danny and the Hornets. We got to 49, Brandon Ingram. Um, so the Brandon Ingram, of course, goes to Danny and the Pelicans. 11 out of 49, Porzingis, Christoph Porzingis for Diego in Dallas. Wait, so where did Porzingis end up? 
Here's Impact Impression, Sean Kemp. Seattle stuff goes to OKC. That's going to be for, for Cody and the Thunder. I guess a lot of these new players, the players who are traded, we're going to start to see them in action. I think Harden should be healthy, right? That From that hamstring injury, should be back with the Sixers. Ben, will Ben Simmons be ready to start tomorrow as well? Or whenever the Nets play, Friday, Thursday or Friday? be interesting to see how all those new pieces fit with their new teams. We got Jalen Suggs, nice rookie die cut to 96. Diego with the magic. There's Devontae Graham for the Pelicans, 96. Another one for Danny. Grab that car, there it is. Doug McDermott, Impact Signatures. Teach me how to Dougie. That goes to Kevin and the Spurs. Next box. Kemba Walker sitting the rest of the way. Guess we're gonna try to work out a trade for him in the summer. Goran Dragic ended up joining the uh, ended up joining the Nets on a buyout deal, which is I think a pretty solid move. I think that kind of went on under the radar a little bit, but that's a good move for them. Guard Javon Carter plans to sign with the Milwaukee Bucks once he clears waivers. Oh, Nets waived Carter upon reaching agreement with free agent Goran Dragic. So Javon Carter will add some depth to the Bucks backcourt who lost Dante DiVincenzo who went to the Kings and Pat Connaughton who's out for like a month following hand surgery. The Bucks tried to sign Dragic but ultimately I think the Lakers would try to get him too but ultimately lost out due to his history and relationship with Steve Nash, his former teammate. We got a rookie orange parallel to 210. That's Franz Wagner. 98 at 210. Franz, Franz Wagner going to Diego and the Orlando Magic. 
pretty solid player there. Some some of you may remember his brother Mo Wagner. Twenty nine out of ninety nine. There's Jalen Brown. Celtics went into the break hot. So let's see if they can come out of the gates hot as well. 31 out of 99, Marcus Smart. I think they had won nine of their last 10 games going into the All-Star break. And we've got Ayo Dunsumu, Dusunmu, rookie yearbook autograph for the Bulls. Matt Jen with Chicago. Some of those spellbound cards can be numbered. Keon Johnson, 41 out of 999 for the Clippers. That'll be for Corey and the Clips. Norman Powell, 34 out of 49. Purple for the Portland Trailblazers, Jeffrey. As a Lakers fan, I want this guy to come back. Come on, we need you, Kendrick Nunn. Get well soon. And the autograph is Rod Strickland. Washington Wizards, Bennett Page, one of his last spot mojo teams. There you go, Bennett. First of many, I hope. Joe Harris back there. All right, another box down. Another box to go. What other no? I'm looking at hoopsrumors.com here. They do a pretty solid job kind of putting together a lot of different stories from a lot of trusted sources. Denver Nuggets plan to sign DeMarcus Cousins for the rest of the season. Sixers expect to sign Willie Cauley-Stein to a 10-day deal. Then Schroeder Rockets not pursuing a buyout agreement. Joe Ingles, Jingles, undergo successful ACL surgery, good. SGA set to return for the Thunder. Malcolm Brogdon expected to come back on Friday. Rashawn Holmes facing an uncertain future with the Kings. Yeah, the Pelican situation is kind of weird with Zion, right? After JJ, according to HoopsRumors.com, after J.J. Reddick's condemnation of Zion Williamson's behavior towards new Pelicans teammate C.J. McCollum, McCollum stated that Williamson finally did reach out and the two spoke. But Williamson's public silence is a willful choice not to quiet the speculation surrounding the franchise. Scott Kushner of NOLA.com and Opines. That's very weird. And now I think a lot of people were making a big thing about how he was, how Zion wasn't in any of those marketing materials for season ticket holders next season. According to, uh, according to the writer for Snola.com, the decision to omit Williamson isn't an indication of New Orleans is interested in training the young star. It's just an acknowledgement that the Pelicans don't know when he's going to return to the court. And it's a way to shield themselves from criticism of false advertising. That's crazy because, yeah. It's a stark contrast to media day comments made by VP of Basketball Operations, David Griffin, for the Pelicans who said that Williamson would be ready for the regular season. And Williamson himself 
also was optimistic about his return, but now he still hasn't played a game this season. And has been in Oregon, I think at the Nike facility, early January, since early January, rehabbing his injured foot. Now on one hand, there's pretty short impact impressions autograph. On one hand, you know, I do kind of feel bad for Zion. I'm sure that foot situation is really, I'm assuming it's real, Jason Price, Golden State Warriors. Because, I mean, you know, he's healthy, he'd be playing. You know, but yeah, the, the criticism of him, him being kind of detached from the team, I don't know. It's not what you want to see in who you hope to be a face of the franchise and a leader. But maybe he's not a leader. A lot of great basketball players, and all those great basketball players are good leaders. It's Keon Johnson to 999. Clippers, that'll go to Corey. LeBron James, 40 out of 99. That's star status insert for the Lakers. And there's Christoph Porzingis to 49. And we got an Evan Mobley. Nice. Pen Pals autograph. 35 out of 49. Nice one for Danny and the Cavs. Cleveland, this is for you. Of course, the All-Star Weekend chatter about LeBron James saying, hey, I think I want to love to play in Cleveland for another year. You think Cleveland wants him? You know, you think Cleveland's like, listen, we've got kind of a good thing going here. We don't want you rattling, coming in here and start, start making some crazy suggestions about moving Sexton or Garland or Mobley or something like that to build some sort of team. For the Thunder, we got Aaron Wiggins. Uh, 66 out of 210. Yeah, Matt Jen, very nice Mobley there for Danny. Thank you, Danny, for grabbing the Cavs. Michael Porter Jr. to 99. All right, we are halfway through this half case break. Appearing on Sports Center, go back to Zion really quick. I know you, we've been hearing a lot about it. ESPN's Brian Windhorst saying the Pelicans and Williamson are distant, both literally and figuratively, since leaving the team. Uh, William Guillory of the Athletic writes that if Williamson wants the noise to stop, outside noise, he needs his action to start backing up his words. Williamson says he's loved the save New Orleans, but then disappears for his period of time, leaving a shroud of mystery. Williamson's last conversation with the media came in late September during media day. Prior to Williamson's departure to Oregon for rehab, several members of the organization over the course of three plus months tried to convince Williamson to make public statements about his recovery process. But Williamson has chosen to remain silent. 
It's gotten to the point where that Pelicans fans don't trust what Williamson has to say anymore. That's not good. Although, on the Zion defense, Tom Ziller of Substack thinks that uh, the Pelicans bear plenty of blame for how events have transpired with Williamson, knowing there's been a rotating cast of three head coaches and several veteran teammates in his two-plus seasons with the team. Uh, sorry about the camera. Creating instability for the young star. Lonzo Ball was reported to Williamson's best friend on the team and two had synergy on the court, but Pelicans opted not to re-sign him. Now the writer says, Williamson clearly isn't doing his job, but others in New Orleans are culpable as well, not just about Zion, which I'd have to agree with. There he is right there. I mean, I kind of understand. I mean, the injury, I think, is a separate, is a separate issue, but, which is on him. But what if you're, what if you're one of the best employees at your work? There's Kevin Durant. I think that's the case hit or the one per case ish, short print. What if you're one of the best workers, best employees at your work? But you know you you can't get better because you know your bosses, the the, the owners are always switching around bosses, switching around leadership. Firing your friends, <laughs> hiring the, the wrong, I mean, that's got to be frustrating. There's Juan Toscano Anderson to 999. See, there's Lonzo right there. I was actually kind of surprised. I thought the, that the Pelicans would retain Lonzo. And there's Elvin Hayes, impact impressions for Bennett and the Wizards. Also, David Griffin is really noted as a, you know, as a pretty well-respected front office guy. There's Kai Jones in 999, so I don't know what is he doing? What's his master plan in all this? Kai Jones goes to Charlotte. That'll be for Danny. Donovan Mitchell to 55, die cut. A lot of questions in that. This drama is what makes what makes sports fun. It's entertainment. What did I do with my oh? I misplaced something. I'm good. We're good, we're good. Turbo, turbo, green, 42. Is that hot? Any guesses on this redemption? happening here with some Cavs talk they've got a pretty young and exciting team after several weeks of rehabbing his injured right ankle Laurie Markkinen is eager to help the Cavs make a playoff push 
Marketing suffered a high ankle sprain on January 22nd and missed Cleveland's last 11 games. Marketing was a full participant in practice on Wednesday. This is probable for the team's game on Thursday. Cavs currently hold the fourth seed in the East with a 35 and 23 record. So if, if the Cavs get to full strength, if they get Darius Garland and Karis LeVert back, and that could be a really could be a really interesting team. Pretty exciting team. Rex, you're guessing Barkley? Which edition of Barkley? Moses Moody for the Warriors, nine ninety nine for Jason Price. Mark Jackson, God bless Jay. <laughs> Joe Jaspi. No, it's God bless you, but. Thanks, Mark Jackson, anyway. That's Sheng with New York Knicks. All right, Rex is the only guesser, huh? Kobe White to 99. Tell you what, Rex. It's Barkley Suns edition. I'll give you $10 of break credit. No, it's Josh Christopher, Pen Pals autograph. And Josh Christopher is a, no, that's Josh Giddy. Not Usman. Is he 24th overall pick for the Rockets? You had the team, Matt Jen, but not, not the player. This goes to Houston. That's going to be for Danny and the Rockets. Your 24th overall pick out of Arizona State. Got a uh, David Johnson, uh, 58 out of 210 for Toronto. That's going to go to Danny. We got a rookie yearbook Miles McBride autograph for Sheng and the New York Knicks. Final box.
So we got the Evan Mobley autograph a little bit earlier. That that is your number three overall pick. Let's see if we can find uh, another one of these like top high drafted rookie players here. Last box. Thanks everybody for filling this up. Good luck. What's in your wallet? 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 Just in, just in case I have to audition for that commercial. What's in your wallet? 880 out of 999. Greg Brown the third. Portland Trailblazers. That'll be for Jeff. What's in your wallet? Trey Murphy, the third. Trey Murphy, the third. I mean, you're born to shoot threes, right? If you're Trey Murphy, the third. 32 out of 35 Pen Pals autograph for the Pelicans. He is a guard. What is his, uh, what's his three point? He was drafted 17th overall out of, uh, junior out of Virginia. What's his three-point percentage at Virginia was like 43%. That's pretty good. So he, he is destined to shoot threes. That's for Nolens. That'll be for Danny and the Pelicans. And I need to audition for AT&T commercial so I can hang out with Lily. I think she's got that covered. I don't know if I'll be... I, I, I mean, like as a person buying a phone? I suppose I can do that. give that a shot I would have rather been on her uh, her little YouTube sketch comedy sort of show that she she was on before the AT&T years I think I actually knew her from that before for the AT&T commercials There's Isaiah Todd, 33 out of 49 for the Wizards. And we got a Karan Butler for Bennett and the Wizards. Impact Impressions autograph. And that, my friends, is that. Elite Basketball, pick your team 14 in the books. Quick little recap of the autographs. Right here, Josh Christopher for Houston. That was the case hit that went to the Nets. That's for Danny. Nice Evan Mobley also for Danny. Some old school guys, new school guys, some nice rookie cards. And there you have it. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I'll see you next time for the next Hoops Break. Bye-bye.